Let's talk about Ubuntu and Fedora today with exciting news on both distros as they pave the way in advanced CPU optimization, as they embrace modern optimizations for the AMD 64 architecture and some of the improvements and benefits, including performance benefits that this news brings. First off, both Ubuntu and Fedora have announced optimizing performance on AMD 64 architectures. Let's read a little bit about it. Everyone wants the Linux distribution they are using to be fast. This is particularly a content-free statement. Of course, who would want their distro to be slow? But at the same time, what does that mean for your distribution to be fast? For example, Ubuntu 21.10 switched the default compression packages to ZSTD, which made them faster to both download and decompress, improving the performance of one operation on Ubuntu. But of course, there are many, many other aspects of performance, and this article is about something very different. The processor features Ubuntu assumes are available. In this post, I will talk about the history of the AMD 64 architecture and some investigations we are doing in collaboration with Intel to make better use of newer processors. Interestingly enough, Fedora has announced a similar deal, changes or optimized binaries for the AMD 64 architecture. A proposed change, which would be additional paths to be inserted into the search path used for executables on systems which have compatible CPUs. Those additional paths will mirror the AMD 64 or x86-64 microarchitecture levels supported by the libc hardware caps mechanism, which involves x86-64 version 2, 3, and 4. System D will be modified to insert additional directories in the path environmental variable, affecting all programs on the system, and this is, an, and this is a, the equivalent internal mechanism affecting what executables are used by the services. Individual packages can provide optimized libraries via the libc hardware caps mechanism and optimize executables via the executed search path. This optimized code will be used if the CPU supports it. Which packages provide the optimized code at which level will be made by the individual package maintainers based on benchmark results, which is fantastic to hear about. Having optimized binaries for specific architectures like the AMD 64 architecture results in multiple benefits. Let's talk about some of these benefits. For those of you unaware, having optimized binaries for specific architectures can one, improve performance. This is kind of a given. And the reason for this is it allows the CPU architecture to run more efficiently and of course can help lead to faster executions of applications and processes. Number two, enhanced efficiency. Things like power consumption and increased battery life can also be optimized by these binaries because when you introduce optimizations, you can effectively turn on and off the processor's power requirements. You can tailor the power requirements to the processor in a better fashion, aka reducing the power consumption when needed and giving extra power under heavy workloads. There's also greater stability. When tailoring these hardware specific binaries, we improve the stability of the system because it reduces the likelihood of crashes and errors due to hardware software incompatibility. Also, number four is of course, future proofing. As architectures and CPU technology improves, it's important that Linux keeps up with the pace of that hardware. Optimized binaries help with this because we can now test the more efficient, stable, and powerful computing modern processors that are being offered to us. So this is not only a great thing for Linux, but the hardware world. Regardless, let's talk about the benefits to Fedora as seen by Fedora. The developers who are interested in this kind of optimization work can perform it within a Fedora without having to build separate repositories that users who have the appropriate hardware will gain performance benefits. Faster code is always more energy efficient. The change will be automatic and transparent to its users. Note that other distributions use higher microarchitecture levels. For example, RHEL 9 uses the x86-64 v2 as its baseline. RHEL 10 uses v3 and other distros provide optimized variants, including OpenSUSE, Arch, Linux, and Ubuntu, we implement the same change in Fedora in a way that is scoped more narrowly, but should provide the same performance and energy benefits. You can actually test these things out today if you wanted to. Here's a how to test section. Make sure to check out the description below in order to see this. I wanna talk about a breakdown here that Ubuntu gave us, but before I do, 
make sure to smash that like button and subscribe below. It's interesting that the Fedora project, as well as Ubuntu, have announced these plans that involve adding extra executables and libraries optimized for these microarchitecture levels on the AMD64 CPUs. Within a month of each other, both made announcements for these improvements. So I wonder if they've both partnered up with Intel or Intel has been reaching out to these Linux distributions as they see some sort of potential in using their CPU hardware. With the advancements in servers, especially being optimized in the AI space, I'm wondering what type of plan is being put forward by Intel in order to get these more advanced CPU features, which are gonna to lead to these performance improvements and energy efficiency. Why is Intel reaching out now as maybe they're feeling like they're falling behind the curve when it comes to some of the modern hardware that these new technologies require? It's interesting when looking at it from that aspect. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section, but these optimizations are going to be significant for the Linux community as they demonstrate a way to use modern hardware capabilities even more so than some of the other modern operating systems, we're going to get tailored and significant performance increases, including efficiency increases on newer hardware. Such optimizations like this could extend to other architectures in the future, which is appealing to using Linux and Linux distributions, and hopefully will inspire more innovations in software optimization for future hardware platforms. With all that being said, that's why I'm kind of excited for this, but I'd wanna break down the CPU features for the AMD64 Linux systems as explained to us by Ubuntu or Canonical here. So there's the baseline level, V2 level, V3, and V4. And what we're seeing here is depending on the level, aka such as the baseline binary, it includes these CPU features, aka instructions in the CPU, and we can see how things get added as the levels increase. For example, the baseline has these features CMOV, CX8, FPU, FXSR, MMX, so on and so forth. And you can see an example instruction on the right-hand side. Now, what's nice about this, we can see right off the bat that we get a new CPU feature, aka instruction, by using version two of the optimized binary, the compare and exchange bytes instruction, which stands for compare and exchange 16 bytes, as you weren't able to do this before in the baseline. It shows you how the different binaries add extra levels of features and optimizations. Another feature here in V2 is the SS E4-2, which is a streaming extension family. This primarily adds instructions improved for string processing, text and number parsing, enabling more efficient processing for these types of data. Let's move on to x86-64 V3. Again, you get a slew of new instructions and features. One exciting one here is FMA which combines multiplication and addition operations into a single instruction, improving accuracy and speed in complex mathematical computations. This here can be used in high-performance computing, graphics, and audio video processing. And notice, again, you get it only on the V3 option. AVX is a nice one, too, as it improves parallelism and performance in floating-point operations. Think things like improved operations in scientific simulations, financial analytics, and video processing, and finally, V4. This one is overall an improvement that we talked about in the AVX again, which a majority of these are going to, again, improve things like simulations, data analytics, machine learning, as these hardware vendors keep trying to outdo themselves in the AI space. Everybody wants to sell hardware for AI as it's becoming a huge industry, especially because there's a vast potential for growth and innovation in this field with things like GPUs and TPUs, there's a huge demand for more efficient and powerful processing to handle these complex AI tasks. So everybody wants technological advancements in hardware, so we have more capable, efficient, and cost-effective AI solutions for hardware. Anyways, not saying that this is only meant for AI, of course, for high simulation loads, analytics, data analytics, and stuff like that, these instructions are great as well but you can now see how important these optimized binaries can be for overall Linux. And you can imagine the hardware and performance improvements that we're going to be seeing as these optimized binaries come out to the baseline. AKA if your hardware supports it and Ubuntu Fedora realizes the hardware exists, you may in the future 
use these optimized binaries. I'm gonna love seeing some of the benchmarking coming out in the next few months. Note that this is all for testing only right now. If you wanna try it for yourself, there's a discourse post that explains where to find the installer for this build, which is not only built out of the rebuilt packages, but will be installed from packages in the rebuild archive by default. Please note that it's only for testing systems installed using this installer will receive no security or any other updates that will be in no way suitable for use in production. So warning, do not use it in production as these features are only currently meant for developmental or experimental environments. Let's all get excited for an awesome new year of Linux improvements. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about these performance upgrades coming to us. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.